What's going on, horror gang? Welcome to I Shot Him Six Times YouTube horror movie channel. As you know, I'm your host, Marcus. Please be sure to shoot that like button and subscribe to the channel, as well as hit that notification icon so you get all the latest content updates to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about an article from Bloody Disgusting's John Squires showcasing Jamie Lee Curtis's comments from her latest interview about Halloween ends. But before we get into it, let's hit that intro. <laughs> I shut in six times. Okay, everyone, as I stated before the intro, Bloody Disgusting's John Squires published this article yesterday showcasing Jamie Lee Curtis's recent interview and comments. As the article was titled, Jamie Lee Curtis teases a different threat to Lori Strode in Halloween Ends? Question mark. So let's read what Jamie Lee Curtis had to say. The video for this interview was taken down. However, like most times, we got transcripts. Michael Myers and Laurie Strode are getting ready to have their final fight in Halloween Ends, which is coming to theaters and also streaming on Peacock on October 14th, 2022. In a new interview that just made its way onto our desk this morning, Jamie Lee Curtis teases Laurie Strode's mental state in Halloween Ends, set four years after Halloween Kills. In addition to noting that Laurie has moved on from worrying about Michael Myers, a stark contrast from the previous two films in this trilogy, she also seems to tease another threat entirely. It's a movie about a final reckoning between Laurie and Michael, she says, of Halloween Ends. There is a battle between them, and the irony is that the 2018 and 2021 movies were about a woman who was prepared for Michael every day of her life since she was 17 years old. This is a movie where she's actually moved on. Lori doesn't see Michael coming. Jamie Lee Curtis continues, and that's a very different result. So the fight with Michael is much more violent, unexpected, and it has to be like a street brawl, she adds. This movie, this other character comes in that she's concerned about, but she's not thinking about Michael, and then Michael comes back. And so this fight was an unexpected fight video interview with Jamie Lee Curtis also features a bit about the film's opening sequence, which sounds very similar to the opening of John Carpenter's original horror classic. The opening of this movie is every parent's worst nightmare. This is a babysitter with a child on Halloween night that goes terribly wrong. It's so crazy intense, she explains. Could this opening have something to do with the mysterious other character, perhaps? Okay, everyone, going to touch on a couple things here. First, I think it is fairly obvious she is referring to Corey Cunningham's character as this other threat, as a lot of us already believe Corey will be a copycat Michael Myers in Halloween Ends. And now from what Jamie Lee Curtis says in this interview, we know the opening of the movie will start off with Corey as he is the babysitter watching his kid when things get crazy and is actually accused of murder. And if Corey is dating Allison like we think, this would make perfect sense while Laurie is skeptical of Corey Cunningham and views him as a threat. Now I move on to the part where it says Laurie isn't worrying about Michael Myers, she has moved on. And it leads me to this question. What has led Laurie to finally move on from Michael and feel secure after four years? The reason I ask this question is because if Michael just up and vanished after the events of Halloween Kills, Obviously, Halloween Kills and Halloween 2018 took place in the same night. With nobody knowing if he is dead, alive, etc., there is no way Laurie would feel secure enough to move on, nor Michael is still at large. You've seen how paranoid and traumatized she was in Halloween 2018, and this was after 40 years of him being locked away in Smith's Grove Sanitarium. So in my opinion, there is no way without knowing exactly what happened to Michael or his whereabouts after the events of Halloween Kills, she'd feel safe to move on knowing how he could pop up any Halloween after those events. There has to be a reason she feels safe enough to not even think about Michael, right? So what is the reason, you may ask? Well, in my opinion, I believe after the opening scene with Corey Cunningham, we're going to get a flashback to the end of Halloween Kills, where after killing Karen, we see Michael get captured by the police and taken to Glass Hill, where he was supposed to be transferred to from Smith's Grove back in 2018 before Dr. Sartain helped him escape. Now, you may ask how did they capture him when no one even saw him enter the house to kill Karen? 
Well, I'd like to think everyone outside of the Myers house, the police, paramedics, and Allison would have heard Karen screams while being stabbed by Michael upstairs, prompting police to rush in and capture Michael. Or we could see an homage to the retcon flashback scene of 1978's ending in Halloween Kills that we got, where after Hawkins accidentally shoots his partner while Michael was strangling him, Michael just simply walks down his stairs and out the front door, where he is met by police and Dr. Loomis and eventually captured. This could also be what he did after killing Karen, leading to his capture this time around. Again, this is just my opinion, but I just don't see Lauren feeling safe to move on and forget about Michael entirely if his whereabouts are unknown and he is still possibly among her and the rest of Haddonfield. Okay everyone, that is it for this video. Hit the comment section below and let me know what you think about these comments from Jamie Lee Curtis. Do you think she is referring to Corey Cunningham's character as a new threat to Laurie Strode, or is she talking about an entirely different character that we're not talking about? As well as let me know what you think about why Lori has forgot about Michael and moved on with her life. Once again, this is I Shot Him Six Times, YouTube Horror Movie Channel. As you know, I'm your host, Marcus. Please be sure to shoot that like button, subscribe to this channel, as well as hit that notification bell so you get all the latest content updates to the channel. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and Facebook. Thank you for watching.